with us on a journey. Through time and moving pictures. Visit places and meet people. You may never have known existed. For this place is special. This place is unique. And you won't even have to leave your seat. Come with us on a journey through the projector's wondrous glare. That begins in 1896 with the brothers Lumiere. There's something special in the very fabric of this building. It has a history to which no other can lay claim. The 54 people who entered 307 Regent Street on that evening witnessed something that no one else in this country had seen before. It was the birthplace of British cinema. From the early days of the Lumiere brothers and the propaganda reels that were screened here during the First World War, Regent Street Cinema established itself as the main venue for quality films, for foreign films, for British films, and for everything else that other people didn't dare to show. What interested Heritage Lottery Fund back in 2011, I guess what compelled us to want to spend one and a half million pounds of lottery players' money on this site was its sort of real national significance in terms of the birthplace of British cinema. What inspired us was going back to that moment in 1896 when people got to see a film for the very first time and really wanted to capture and celebrate that moment in history. Our hopes for the future of the Regent Street Cinema are twofold, really. One is that we've helped to create what we hope is a very sustainable enterprise, one where people will come in and enjoy seeing cinema and help to keep this extraordinary historic building alive. And secondly, a sort of a marriage of that kind of really inspiring uh, and really interesting public engagement work from young people coming in and learning about the building and its cinematic heritage to filmmakers of tomorrow, to just community groups who may have a passing interest in their local heritage. I walked past the closed Regent Street Cinema many, many times over the years and one day I was looking in the windows of the university and it said, why don't you buy a seat? And I thought, what a marvellous present because my wife, Debbie, uh, went to university here, studied film and television when it was a polytechnic and I conceived the romantic gesture of buying two seats with our names on so that we would sit side by side forever in the dark together. That was all I intended to do. And since then, I've been at every fundraiser. I've worn hard hats. I've spent money. I've made speeches. It's the last time I'm romantic. But you know what? It's been worthwhile. For myself, I dedicated a seat here to my late wife, Jilly Davis. And we always had a joke that uh, whenever we were looking through the TV schedules, um, if there was a film on, and I'd say, oh, such. And she said, no, 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 I've seen it. I've seen it once. I don't want to see it again. And I thought she'd appreciate the idea of buying her a seat and the dedication says, Jilly Davis, who only wanted to see a film once. I think the significance of having seats named is probably limited. But I think w when fundraising, one of the nice things is to make things very specific. Obviously, I think that's enormously important. <laughs> and the reason is mainly because it's probably the only way I'm going to appear in the cinema. <laughs> Quinton Hogg was very important to the university because, in fact, he was the founder of the original institution and the trust uh, endowed by the family is for the advancement of education through the university here and we are also the owners and landlords of this magnificent building. It was really important to the trust that this part of the building was restored because we believe that it will really enhance the opportunities offered to those studying film in the university and also link that faculty with all the other faculties within the university so that it can be enjoyed by all the students. This again isn't just a cinema though. It's a flexible environment that fits with its modern surroundings. Come along and enjoy a film, discuss that film in the bar, hire the building for a special occasion. This space offers a very special opportunity for everybody.
even though this auditorium closed as a cinema in 1980, it has always been a big part of the university and that relationship can only grow from strength to strength now. Over the years, thousands of students have passed through the university and they've learned all disciplines of film. Regent Street Cinema, together with the university's great facilities and lecturers, will ensure that the next generation of filmmakers who study here will continue to thrive. The most valuable thing that the students can do as part of their learning experience is to test their films on audiences. And the chance to do that in a real cinema in the heart of London's West End is the biggest motivation that you can imagine and the biggest test and the biggest challenge and hopefully the biggest inspiration. I just stopped to, um, you filled in for me, thanks. Bollocks. This iconic cinema builds on our international reputation for filmmaking, but it's not a standalone facility. It adds to our portfolio of educational and public spaces across the university. At Marlebone and Beaker P3 it provides an outstanding exhibition and performance space. At Harrow, London Gallery West offers an exciting exhibition space. All of these offer our staff, students and alumni opportunities to promote their creative talents. At the moment in the market, Although there is a variety of different cinemas opening, essentially everybody seems to be screening the same kind of film. And I think that people are looking for something different and they have a, a great appetite for film and a great understanding and knowledge. And I think it's a chance to screen variety. <laughs> I think one of the things that um, audience are slightly starved of at the moment is a sort of film education, if you like. And if one has a vibrant programme of cinema, both past and present, I think that's a really good thing for uh, an audience to, to, to educate them in. And particularly as commercial cinema in many ways gets less adventurous and less frankly interesting. I think to have a, a broad program of, of films that people are able to see that have been made, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, is, is, is really good. If I was a student again, it would be fantastic having uh, the Regent Street Cinema. I mean, it's unique for a start having that nowadays, but, but um, being so close to Soho as well, I think it could, you know, become a, a hub for um, filmmakers past, present and future. <laughs> My vision for the future Regent Street Cinema is to create a very unpretentious place where film lovers can come and see films and be inspired and to create a place which survives in the industry, which relaunches the building as an essential part of the film scene in London. 
it's not only a one-of-a-kind space, we have one-of-a-kind facilities too. At a time where people are taking 16 mil and 35 mil projectors out of cinemas, we've put them back in. And we also have a 4K digital projector. These facilities will allow us to screen a greater variety of films, and that's what makes us unique. It makes us original. It makes us groundbreaking. It makes us innovative. It means we'll show the greatest films the way they're meant to be shown. It means no one celebrates cinema like we can.